Are you ready to take action to attain the lifestyle of your dreams? It's a great way to make a lot of money fast, fast, fast. The Clever Investor Show. Hey, welcome back to another episode of The Clever Investor Show. I'm your lucky host, Cody Sperber, the OG Clever Investor. And in the studio, we have an absolute freaking legend of the real estate game. One of the most polarizing people in the real estate space, super successful entrepreneur with over 20 years of entrepreneur and investing experience, over 6,500 properties bought and sold, over 1,900 partners. Yeah. You partnered up with over 1,900 people yeah. and helped them buy one, two, five, 10, 20 rental properties. Yep. They probably would not have done that without you. Mm -hmm. We have the legendary Chris Crone in the studio. What's hey, up, man? And you're looking sharp, bro. Dude, man, I appreciate it. Thank you. Can you take me shopping? You're, you, this is like, you always, every time I see you, you got style. I guess, you know, actually I picked this up. I was with Russell Brunson in Vegas with his personal shopper and just having a blast. It was just like, it sounds a little gay, but it was just two guys shopping and having fun. He was shopping for, you know, his... Uh, you know, his big event that he does every year. You're yeah. Fun. Uh, well, you know what? I went shopping the other day and I had a gay stylist with me and yeah. the clothes they were know. fire. They the know. clothes were fire. They I'm, know. I'm not going to lie. Probably in between him and Maria going back and forth. Yeah. They pushed me so far out of my comfort zone. Like, did you get to some no's? I got a few no's, but I actually, some of the things they put me in actually grew on me. Wow. You know, now I got hair again. Yes. So now that I, I purchased new hair. So yeah. now that I got my hair rocking, it's like, okay, I got to. I got to get some new outfits, start yeah. start getting back out there. It's been great. That's cool, man. Great. By the way, any of you men out there that are thinking about getting a hair transplant, highly recommend it. Awful experience going through it, right? <laughs> it's like they're, 12 they're pulling, hours they're pulling hair out of the side of your head and relocating it. Yeah. Um, but the I'm now one year, exactly one year in. And you look good, man. I got I And got your body line. looks good. Like you freaking look buff. Well, I'm, I remember I, when you like started that transformation a couple of years ago. You look I good. went from a pear shape and today I did 100 pull-ups at the gym. No way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I'm, I could, I can't do them all in a row, obviously, but I can, I could do, you know, 10 sets of 10 pretty, yeah. pretty easily, which is good because I'm 200 pounds, six, yeah. six, one, 200 pounds. So it's respectful. I you like know, it. I'm, it's I'm totally in the work. I like it. Yeah. All right. So I'm, I'm super excited that you're here because um, I want to talk to you just about the state of the real estate market yeah. right now. We got a ton of investors that follow this show. Yeah. Um, just the, the Fed are pulling levers again, mm -hmm. you know, the, you know, we have, uh, Elections coming up, the economy's kind of crazy. If you were to give us like maybe a, you know, a one minute snapshot of where you think things are going and things you're starting to think about, yeah, what, where where are you at right now? Real estate was crazy in 2020 and 2021, and the market just jumped through the roof. And for the last couple of years, the moment the the Fed put the rates up to eight percent, it stagnated everything. They did it because they wanted to get in control of inflation. However, we now are risking with unemployment going up, we're now risking a recession. And so because of that, they started dropping them. Rates are now at six. But the magic number, the tipping point that we're looking for is when rates hit 5.25, because that's mm. when renting becomes more expensive than owning. That's when renters are gonna flood into the marketplace. And right now we have three more cuts before the end of the year. And if they just do a quarter slash on each one of them, which that's not unrealistic, by the time we hit the end of the year, the market is gonna be on fire all over again. I think we're gonna see our, our national median probably jump up another 50 to $80,000. And uh, it's gonna be crazy. So anyone that knows what they're doing right now in real estate, like I'm so geared up for that because based on my portfolio, I'm like, I'm gonna blink and be worth 10 to $20 million more just because I've been in the game, but mm -hmm. I'm trying to buy as much as I can right now. Problem is most people don't know that actually, they don't know you're supposed to be buying right now. They're just waiting. And that's the problem with consumers. They don't really get it from the investor point of view. So just to make it clear to anybody, the reason you would want to buy right now is because once the market starts pumping, yeah. that forced appreciation is going to happen. And because every all the buyers are going to come back in the market. And in single family, we're missing 3.2 million homes conservatively, probably closer to five. And we're at a historic supply demand crunch that we've never had before. And so it's like, okay, so what happens when all these renters say rates are low? I've been waiting a couple of years. I want to blow my wad and buy a house. It, we're going to get into price wars again. I've been on the sidelines waiting to blow my wad for at least a year and a half now. Yeah. It's a long time. It's a long time, Cody. It's a long time. That's a real long time. It's time to get back it's in time. the game. It's time. Well, all right. So, all right. So let's say they're on the side. They're maybe in, talk to some new investors right now. Yeah. They want to get in the game. Mm -hmm. What kind of properties should they be looking for? So I'm not doing anything in multi right now. Multi is overbuilt. Right now that market's gone soft. Single family is 
it's the game that everyone wants to get into. And I'm talking about large corporations and the government fighting back because you've got $50 billion by hedge funds that are being deployed into single family. Over the next decade, by 2030, it's projected that 10 more percent of single family homes are actually gonna be corporately owned. And when you think about that, the government is fighting that because it's taking away the American dream from people. And you look at, I look at the gains I've made in real estate. We just finished a nine year longitudinal study on 2,130 rentals. And we're averaging year over year 60.65% ROI. Uh, appreciation ROI, 31.8%. Which means if someone buys one rental in 20 years, you can grow that into $12 million. And, and, and said it differently, because most people- Yeah, I was gonna say, walk me through that math. Oh, like just pull out a future value calculator, go to google.com and say, wait a second, if my money grows at 31.8% every year, one rental, call it 50 grand, doing that year over year over year for 20 years, that's $12 million. And, and that's not fake math, like that's the reality of I started with a rental in three years, it doubled or tripled in my ROI. So what did I do? I sold the home, I bought three more. And then a few years later, I sold those and I bought nine. I sold those and I bought 20. That's what I've been doing for 20 okay, years. Okay, I get what you're saying now. Yeah. It's, it's more taking, getting into the one and then multiplying it from there. It's a herd. It's yeah. like, I want my rabbits to make babies and then I want those rabbits to make babies. And that's what I do with portfolio building. Got it. So it's a killer time to be in. Now, those ROIs, the, Forbes says that the average investor gets a 10.5% average ROI. I'm getting 60% year over year. And the reason why I'm getting six times more money than the average is because out of 324 markets in the US, I only buy in the top five. And what that prejudice does is it allows me to go into these micro economies like Blue Oval City in Memphis, right? Ford has this $11 billion power plant that they started putting in two years ago. It's creating 11,000 new jobs. They don't have homes, but the affordability on a brand new house is under $200,000. So your national median home is 430, 450 grand. I'm buying a house for under $200,000 that in the next five years is gonna be worth 320 to $350,000. So by finding that market and by buying new builds and getting them rented out, I'm now getting my cash on cash on my rents are sitting at sometimes five or 6% which in real estate where rents haven't even caught up from the last two years of, of price hikes, it's it's amazing. Like that's, those are really, really solid numbers. So it would be safe to say if somebody had money trapped in their equity in their home or in a 401k or something, and it's just yeah. sitting there and they're not earning those types of returns, they should be getting it out of those vehicles and putting it over into rental real estate, the right type of rental real estate like you're talking about. If, if you are following society's game plan of 401k and IRA and house payer offering, a little bit of Dave Ramsey in there, by 65 years old on average, you're going to have $254,000 in retirement. You'll be spending $85,000 a year at that point in your life, which means that you spent 40 working years to save up three years of money for retirement. And so here's what people don't get. They're like, yeah, but Chris, 401ks, they're safe. IRAs are safe. I'm like, yeah, they're so safe that your blended average on retirement is probably five or 6%. You're so safe that compounding interest has no impact. You would need eight lifetimes mm -hmm. to actually have that compound into something meaningful. And so, yeah, you take, you take 50 Gs, what you need to get into a rental, you take $50,000 that's sitting in a 401k or IRA, it's gonna triple over 20 years. With me, it's 75 Xs over that same period of time. And it's like, why is it so much more? That's the power of learning how to get into real estate, earning double digits versus single digits. And that alone, that's the game changer. So I remember when yeah. you first, this was years ago, and you said, Cody, I'm gonna start partnering with yeah, my- it was brand new. Yeah, it was a new concept. Yeah. And I remember thinking, wow, that's, a, that's an interesting thing. Cause people, you know, so many, I was so, I was, you know, focused on courses and mentorship and stuff. Yeah. We weren't doing deals yeah. with our students. You know, I was, yeah. I was keeping that separate and like, no, we're an education company. We teach. And you were yeah. like, nah, I'm going to, I'm going to actually just, mm -hmm. nobody wants to take a course. Yeah. They want to do, want to do, they want to do a deal. Yeah. And if they have me holding their hand, walking through it, they can have me kind of do it for them yeah. and stuff. And I said, well, that's a brilliant idea. Let's see how you do. And then you yeah. went out and just murdered it with yeah. the concept, which I, I, I have to commend you for, because you were one of the first to really go yeah. hard in that. Um, and it's cool because you built your brand off of YouTube. Yeah. You know, people know you from all of your insane amount of YouTube content. Yeah. You know, and and that's where- the That's my normal content. That's my financial content. A lot of the social media stuff lately has gotten a little bit more crazy, but it's, it, it's, it's, it's weird. I think anyone can become internet famous so easy these days. And so- there's Let's a, talk about that real quick. Cause I think- a lot I'd of distraction. To, I would love to the call the elephant out in the room, which, which by the way, guys, 
Chris is speaking at Clever Summit. The stuff you're talking mm. about right now yeah. is just the tip of the iceberg mm. of what we're going to be sharing at Clever Summit. Clever Summit is our annual flagship event. We'll have 2,000 plus people there. If you're watching this, listening to this, you want to go to cleversummit.com and just look at the speaker lineup. That's I'm talking crazy. about some of the most talented human beings on planet Earth. Patrick, Bet, David, um, sold over for over uh, i think he got nine figures on one of his exits for his business <clears throat> has over a billion views on youtube you probably have seen him on his podcast he's been on joe rogan all kinds of other big podcasts yeah. runs valuetainment dude you got ryan sarant that's going to be there and he just had his netflix show come out dude and he's he's he got, killing it from that realtor space perspective i'm he, really excited i think he's one of the most well-known realtors in the world in the world right and now. he yeah. just got signed up for season two of owning manhattan yeah i knew him from back in the day on million dollar listing when i was working with josh altman and just to see him grow into a, somebody who owns a brokerage in new york one of the most competitive markets yeah. on the planet and be one of the most successful yeah. brokerages yeah there's a lot to learn from him uh like i said we got chris we got vina jetty she's got over a billion dollars bought and sold in her multifamily portfolio. Yeah. Jen Gottlieb, one of the most powerful female speakers. Um, Tim Story just told me that he's going to jump on the wow, stage. Wow. Um, he's been on Oprah Dude, a bunch like, of times. This, the lineup, you got like 20 Pace Morby. really talented speakers that are going to be there. And that's not even the coolest part of this event. Right. This event, what's cool about Summit, and I'll get off my commercial soapbox here in a second, but what's cool about Summit is not just the power of the speakers. It's going to be three amazing days of awesome mentorship by the world's greatest. But what's better than that is the people that we're putting in this room. Yeah. The caliber of networking, the caliber of fun. Uh, it's going to be like edutainment for yeah. you. We're, we rented nightclubs. We brought in my favorite DJ Sikik. We have one of the most famous rappers on planet earth. And if you buy a ticket the day before summit, I'm going to announce who that rapper is. Mm. Um, we're doing club nights. We're doing networking parties, VIP parties, a yacht party. Like we're doing all kinds of stuff because we know yeah. that you'll retain more of the tactical training that these speakers bring. If you're having fun, when you're having fun, your brain opens up, you retain more of that and the business partnerships, the money flow, the deal yeah. flow. Next thing you know, you might be sitting in a, in the hallway and you're having a conversation with Chris Crone and Pace Morby. And next thing you know, you're a deal partner with them. Dude, I was talking to Pace and he he was showing me all the states that he did, I think a dozen deals in just with people he met in the room. When I was there two years ago, I met business partners. I met new people that, mm -hmm. that honestly, they were game changers for me. And so just even as a speaker, Clever was huge for me. But hearing about the deals that people are getting, there's, there's people out there that want to be in the game of real estate or are in. And they either have money trapped in like a 401k or IRA or home equity, or maybe they're a successful business owner and they got a little bit of money on the side. So you got some people that will have some means. You got other people that have the deal flow. And then you got other people that want yeah. to put in the sweat equity. And if you're any one of those people, that's like summit is the perfect place to go where it's just like, oh my gosh, fire. I'm meeting the people mm -hmm. that I'm going to make my next million dollars with. Yeah. And it's not a pitch fest. We don't do that crap where people are selling courses from stage. None of that is going on. Not one yeah. course will be offered from stage period. Um, and so get to cleversummit.com. We only have a very small handful of tickets left. We have sold out of a couple different layers of the tickets already. Mm. So make sure you get there. It's Hollywood, Florida, September 13th, 14th, and 15th. If you're listening or watching this afterwards, you'll just have to stay on the lookout for mm. any of our next events that we uh, offer here at Clever. But for now, if you're watching this, don't overthink this. Tickets are as cheap as 97 bucks. Just get there. You'll, you'll get a massive ROI on uh, your time. <laughs>
I want to talk about the elephant in the room. Why is, like, there, why is there an elephant? Well, there's always an elephant with you, dude, because like you're bold, you know, you do, yeah. you put yourself out there. And at first I was like kind of scratching my head, like what the fuck is he doing? Like, this yeah. is like really out there. You've always been one of the best content creators in the real estate space, but you always stayed tactical or training. You know, it was always like you and a whiteboard, you yeah. showing examples and yeah. um, helping people like just learn. And then all of a sudden, I don't know, a year or two ago, your content started to shift to like more viral content. Yeah. And I started reading the comments in there and some people loved it. Yeah. And a lot of people started hating on it. And yeah. all of a sudden it was like you laying in bed with your wife and you kind of pet her head once in a while. And then you see a thousand comments like, why did he just pet her head? Yeah. Or uh, you're talking about crystals or yeah. your mind palace. Yeah. And I'm like, God, these are the most insane conversations just yeah. all over. The I'm going to have, I'm going to be a trillionaire. I'm going to have a billion companies. I'm gonna do this. And it was like, what is he doing? No. But knowing you, I knew I kind of, I, you have a plan. You don't do anything just randomly. Yeah. So what was that all about? And yeah. how did it, how did it play out for you? You know, you, you got to constantly be innovating. And we live in a world today where like the internet, it's like everyone can become internet famous for like the dumbest things. You've got the the fans only page and you've got other people. Everyone's looking for something different. And in my private masterminds, I get people that beyond real estate, they get curious. They're like, well, how do you actually live your life? And so I said, you know what? I think I'm just going to try something different and let people see, you know, more of my life and some of my crazy opinions. I had, um, I had Phil Donahue reach out because I had, I just made this casual post where I said, hey, my, my teacher was 300 pounds overweight and I pulled my kid out of school because of it. I wasn't trying to piss off fat people. I wasn't trying to fat shame. I was just saying, my kid is probably gonna spend more time in that class with their teacher than their dad or their mom you, you know, every single week. And it didn't feel right to have all of that unconscious influence on my child when I'm like, well, I like that you're teaching my children writing or math, but I actually don't like what you're teaching about your lifestyle and your low energy or your problems. And so my wife and I, we pulled our kids out of school. This is before the pandemic. And I basically said, this is cool. I've never had more fun writing a job post in my life for the teacher that I want for my kids. It was the longest job post. It was like 19 pages. And um, we started getting a handful of these candidates that were like these true divergence that were like, my first teacher, he was like in a rock band, but a professor of religion that traveled the world. Like he's the most eclectic person, super smart, super intelligent. And I'm like, I want that guy to teach my kids. So he's out there literally like running with them, doing their exercise programs, everything else, and giving my kids an education that I want my kids to get. So yeah, so so Phil Donahue and a number of, of outlets, they got, they were, they were excited about the rage that I was accidentally cr creating online by just talking about the fact that I, d I care not just what my kids are being taught, but who they're being taught by, what those people's belief systems are. And let's not be, let's, let's not lie. Like, look at the crazy world we live in, right? When you have kids and you have all these ideologies, like my kids are my science experiments to parent the way that I want to parent them. And society has a lot of really messed up notions on what that's supposed to look like. And so I just said, I'm just going to do it different. So yeah, I get hated for a lot of that stuff or, or people see him on private jets and there's like, oh, he's just flexing. He's just trying to show off. And, you know, why is he taking his family out to the Galapagos and then airing it, you know, getting a private yacht for the week and having this crazy experience. And then, then there was a lot of other super unpopular things that I said. Um, uh, but what do you think was the, the most, was there anything that you said that was kind of crazy and out there that you wish you can reel back in or... You know that it just wasn't worth saying. I, I, I think that the what the world is starving for is authenticity. There's so much bullshit. And the question is, who are you really? What I did is I just went out there and said, "This is who I am, really. Like these are my actual beliefs on God." And here's some of the beliefs that differ from probably traditional Christianity, etc. Um, I just went out there and I just I shared everything. I also, dude, I, I started a health channel. I went out there and I was showing people my bodybuilding competitions. And it didn't matter what video I posted. I got skewered alive. Everyone is like, everyone's a health coach when no one's a health coach. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like doing dips with like 90 pounds strapped between my legs. It's like, oh, those are half dips. He's not even going all the way. I was like, I can't, I can't make anybody happy. Yeah, you're not winning on it. And, and so I- Some dude, some big fat guy with popcorn. Oh, 100%. You know, you know. <laughs> so for a year and a half, I just basically said, I don't care what the world thinks. I'm just going to share me. Okay. And- it, it is true that, you know, my, my social media company, they, they were, they were looking probably for some of the outer edge opinions of me that you'd only find inside some of my really deep masterminds. But I just said, let's just try it. And so, um, when I saw a lot of the hate that was out there, uh, like, did I, did I flinch at it? No. Did it, did it hurt my soul? 
No, but did it hurt some of my loved ones that were like, oh dude, like I'll never forget my sister-in-law came in town for Thanksgiving and she's like, dude, what's all this bullshit that you're putting out there on the internet? Like I care about you, but who is this? And I remember I just looked at her dead in the eyes and I said, what you're seeing is actually who I am and what I believe. And she just sits there and she's like, really? I'm like, yeah, that's all I'm doing. I'm just sharing who I am. I get it. Like I reserve the right to use my agency to believe whatever I want and do life the way that I do. And that's going to resonate with some people, but do wherever I go, I polarize people and it's just not my business. I just don't care. But that viral strategy is not as effective with the way the internet has shifted anyway. So you don't see like a ton of that out there. But um, so it was when crazy. It, when, it, when you first started putting it out, did you get a marketing lift? Did you get a dude? I got a three X on views. Yeah, like we we you know we were getting we we were netting an extra five million views every single week across all our platforms. And the way social media works, if you want to nerd out on it, is you got long form and short form. Short form is where people that that's the trend. People want to watch fifteen to thirty second clips with their ADD ADHD minds. They want to watch something, and if they find you're interesting, then they'll go to your page and then they'll watch several of them. And then if they like you there, they're like, "I like this dude." Then they're going to go to, to my long form, and then they're going to really figure out who I am and what I'm really about. Because you can't tell anyone who you are in fifteen seconds, or even if you watch like 10, 30 second clips of me, you're going to get a flavor. But so much is out of context. So what it ended up doing was driving a lot of people to long form. And did that turn into millions of dollars? Yeah. Did it help me find hundreds of new partners that I now build real estate portfolios with? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it also helped me find my avatar. I mean, I think that's what matters the most at the end of the day is the world is so sensitive. On the one hand, everyone wants to feel comfortable saying whatever they want. And then everyone's prepared to judge and skewer each other alive for saying whatever they want. And so you, you can't make anybody happy. Yeah. All you can do is be would, you. Would you would, would, but you, you're not doing as much of that anymore. A lot of your content's back to what's working for, for What's now. working, yeah. yeah. Okay, and would you do anything different? No, I wouldn't, I'd do it all the same. You would? Yeah, well, yeah. It, it, it's, it's making me the byproduct of who I am today. Like, I'm living my life real time. I'm learning, I'm licking my wounds, I'm learning my lessons, I'm having wins. And like, why would I take away anything that helps me become who I am today? Like. Part of being authentic is if I'm pissed at you, then I'm going to be pissed at you and I'm going to tell you. I'm not going to hide that. That's what a people pleaser would do. People pleasers are liars. They're inauthentic. It's like, can you, can you get me if you experience me in all my textures? I think there's something unconditionally beautiful about being okay with every part of who a human is. So the only way to really know is if you show them. Yeah. I'm just showing. All right. Well, I was only asking, you know, like <laughs> there, there, I mean, there's whole websites or um, IG pages that have you as their poster child of yeah. people to go after, you know? Yeah. Uh, the, but, but, you know, if you wouldn't, if you wouldn't change anything, you wouldn't change yeah. anything. Um, and at the end of the day, you are a hardcore real estate investor. You yeah. might say, they might see a clip of you talking about crystals or, you know, one of your, one of your crazy beliefs, but if they really go deep, they're going to see yeah. A dude who actually is technically doing well, a lot of real dude, estate transactions. Well, dude, on the crystals, all I was really doing was just trying to show, listen, this is my wife. She's totally into crystals. I don't care about crystals, but I care about her. So what does it look like to advocate for my life, for my wife to care about the things that she cares about so we can connect on something that we share in common? So yeah, like is crystals going to be like a really weird thing for people that follow me for finance? Sure, but if you walk into my house, I got millions of dollars of crystals and I'm into it for my wife's sake because I'm into my wife. And so, could you sell those crystals someday? Like, oh yeah. do they go up in value? They, they go up between ten and twenty percent every single year. Crystals. It's just, dude. It's just literally like a high interest bearing bank account that's not so very. So it's liquid. no different than um, uh, uh, sports cards or any, any other collectible. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Well, and then my wife geeks out on buying things at like seventy and eighty percent discount. So. Technically, it's an incredible store of value. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, it's like it's, art. You're it's buying, a collectible. You're, it's you're, an buying, art. you're buying for art. sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> crystals. Uh, how many kids you got? Four. Four. Yeah. And um, oldest is eighteen. Youngest is thirteen. Are do, are any of them getting into real estate? Um, yeah. So my kids are all privately educated. I don't call it homeschool because I'm not their teacher. Um, we hire teachers. We have two teachers that come in and teach. And my eighteen year old has actually been on a really on a media and social media. She's had a private professor for the last two years. Now she's going into that career field. Her professor has now become her business partner. Like oh, wow. she's figured out her thing. My big thing with my children education is customizing education. I think it is so stupid. Do you remember when we went to school? It's like, you have to learn physics. You have to learn chemistry. You have to learn all these things, trigonometry. Mm. Why, why, like other than developing the mind and helping create a well-rounded person, I think we put way too much effort and energy into things that just don't matter. So I took the risk with my kids and I said, you know, I'm probably going to create some deficiencies compared to the world standards. 
but I'm also going to help you be brilliant in learning how to do the things that you love. So when I pull my kids out and I have these teachers come in, I, I teach my kids once a week, every Tuesday morning, and I teach them about money because that's my area of expertise. I don't believe in homeschooling where one parent can teach a child all things. I just don't think you're gonna create a well-rounded kid. What I do is I have two teachers that are really brilliant and eclectic and then they bring in like dozens of other people over time that come in and basically facilitate their education and give them something very unique and custom. Um, and so I you, teach you, my kids about real estate. I teach them about money. I was literally just on Tuesday morning. My son's like, okay, dad, I've gone from two beehives to four beehives. I've got $1,800 of honey to sell. Should I go do the Thanksgiving point show where it's a $185 booth or do I go three Saturdays in a row for a cheaper $25 booth and try to save money but take an extra 15 hours to sell all of my honey. And we're doing opportunity cost analysis mm, with a 13 year old on, because his goal by 18 is to have 80 hives. If he has 80 hives, he's gonna make 50,000 plus dollars a year. So he's already better off than a college grad. And that's my goal with my kids is I want all of you, when you're out of high school, I want you at least earning the kind of money that a college grad would. And if you wanna to go to college, if academia is your path and that's gonna get you where you wanna go, great. And if not, I'm instilling them with the entrepreneurship. And um, so yeah, real estate is impregnated in all of their minds. But even before there's real estate though, there's do you have a steady stream of income based on a passion or something you love that you're good at, that you can model out, that will give you active income? Because if you do that and you're smart with your money, then you're gonna pay yourself first and have the money to invest in real estate and do that. I love that. Yeah, yeah that's good parenting. Um, I don't right. know, dude. I might Let's, be screwing up my no, kids. No, I don't big think time so. <laughs> I, I think the world's changed. You know, young yeah. young people have you know unlimited technology and access, yeah. mentorship in their pocket. You know, mm -hmm. they they they're being exposed to way more. Mm. You know, my son the other day, um, I get an email whenever he misses assignments and stuff, and so I'll pull him up, and it normally hits me on a Friday, so I'll pull him up and I'll be like, "Dude, you're missing two assignments in geometry. Like, what what what's the deal?" And he goes, "Dad." I looked at every single assignment that we had for the entire year. I weighted the value of every single paper and every single assignment. And I have a B in the class and those two averaged out over the year. I just decided I didn't even need to look at those or do those because they're not going to move the needle enough for me. And I don't want to waste my time doing things that don't move the needle. Yeah. And I'm like, I can't really I argue that. with that. Yeah. You know, he at least thought it through and it wasn't just like, I forgot to do it or you know, lazy, you know, some excuse. He, he was strategy. like, yeah, he had a strategy. I'm yeah. like, all right, I'm going to drop the uh, geometry yeah. failure. Dude, I'm, what I'm actually really loving right now is my 14 year old a year ago got into like, like extreme cake decorating. And she's been learning how to make these crazy cake decorations like you see on these TV shows. She's 14 years old and can now charge 500 to a thousand dollars for these cakes that she knows how to make. And she's like, mm -hmm. dad, by the time I'm 18, I want to just have my cake decorating business. I want to do the really ornate ones. I want to have a couple of people that work for me that can do the more basic ones. And like, I think that's what I want. I'm like, you have no idea what you want. But at 14, it's cool to think yeah. that you know what you want. And you're also developing the skills that, who knows, maybe that's the thing. I don't know. Yeah, that's good. All right. So let's just kind of, uh, I'm going to ask you some questions as if we were doing a live Zoom call and you had 100 newbies on there, you know, yeah. just let's kind of rapid fire some things just to kind of hear your thoughts on some of these um uh uh starting a new business partner or no partner i wouldn't start a new business i'd buy an existing business we have the largest wealth transfer in history and starting a business sucks compared to buying an existing business all right walk me through that okay well talk to business brokers go online put yourself out there and realize that you have these boomers that are retiring and the next generation doesn't want to inherit their business and so most of them are not thinking about exit um of, of every 15 businesses that are listed for sale, only one will actually sell. And what that screams of is creative financing and basically having a chance to negotiate a deal where it's like, wow, thank you for spending 10, 20 or 30 years building this business. It's grossing $3 million a year and it's netting you a half a million dollars a year. And I see that you've got it listed for, you know, a three a X, you want one and a half million dollars of, of EBITDA. And um, you might be able to go in and negotiate a deal where you put 50 or $100,000 down and then walk into a business that you will finance itself with the money that it's making that has been around for 10 or 20 years and has track record and maybe you can get the owner to stay on and help you mentor you through taking that over. It's like, that's a lot easier of a business to jump into than starting something. So if you're a new entrepreneur, 
if you can start with something existing, I think your experience is going to be a lot better. Your chances of success are going to be a lot higher than starting something from scratch. Yeah, so that's a good, that's a different answer than I thought you were going to give. So that's good. Um, how do you feel about partnerships? Actually, I love partnering. My my rule is, am I going to do my Malcolm Gladwell 10,000 hours or not? So when I meet someone that's like, I want real estate, I'm like, I'm not, I don't know if you want real estate. I think you want the benefits of what real estate can do. And here's the litmus test. Are you actually going to put in your 10,000 hours and master it? Or do you just want the lifestyle? And so you want to cheat your way through the experience and hope that you can kind of jimmy rig your way to success. And what I tell people is if you are honest with yourself and you're not going for mastery, get a partner. If you are going to go for mastery, don't get a partner. Getting a partner might even help you go faster. But I think I use partners in every aspect of my life for acceleration anytime I'm not going to master something. And I think that's the pitfall that most people have is they're greedy little bastards that want everything, but they're not willing to pay the price to really understand how to get it. And so mm -hmm. my compromise is, are you going to master it? No, get a partner. You're going to master it? Yeah, maybe you don't need a partner. Got it. Um, biggest mistake that you can reflect on in your business career? Karma. It's very easy for the ego to play the game of right and wrong. Who's right, who's wrong. But bad karma is created when you're doing the right thing, but you're doing it with the wrong energy. And that energy can hang around. And what happens is bad karma is collecting body bags where you wish you had done it different than the way you did. Like 2009, I had an employee that, I mean, I, I started my first business in 2007. And two years later, I took my bookkeeper and then put her in a position of C-level wasn't ready for it. I was naive. I didn't know what I was doing. She stole money from me. And when I caught her, I was very upset and angry. How I handled the situation, what I did was right. I should have fired her, but I didn't just fire her. I wanted, I wanted to get back at her. I wanted her to know that I knew what she did. So I did this investigation and research and filled this five inch binder with proof out of her email of all the ways that she was cheating me. And because of how I handled it, 30 days later, the SEC comes knocking on my door with 93 allegations of something I'm doing wrong. Paid a million dollars and 14 months later, find out there's no truth to any of those claims. But that whole thing came into my world because I created bad karma. Mm. Because someone did something I didn't like, but I don't like how I handled it. So I think for me, one of the things I really look at is not what's the right and wrong of something, but what's the how energetically of how you manage that. And so a lot of my biggest mistakes came in the form of how I had conversations, not necessarily whether or what I was doing was right or wrong. Okay. Yeah. What's the biggest power move you've made to save money on taxes? <laughs> um, I don't think there's a few. I mean, you know, back under Trump's administration, when you could write 100% of a jet off in its first year, it's like I could give Uncle Sam a dollar or I could put it into a jet and save a dollar. One for the jet, one for me. Um, found the same thing true with commercial. Um, you know, when you buy real estate, you have cost segregation, which means you can accelerate depreciation. But when you buy a commercial building, you know, like you've got this building here. So if you, if you own a business, uh, SBA will say, put 10% down. And in most situations, if you put 10% down, that's a dollar into the building, which is an asset. Mm -hmm. And it's a dollar in your pocket compared to giving $2 to the government. Yeah. Um, that's another really big one. Um, and then I think the last thing is at some point when you're financially doing well enough where your tax bill is in the millions and not the hundreds of thousands, you have to find some type of fractional um, family office. Like Jim Dew has a family office that I work with. You got to find some kind type of fractional family office where they start getting into the bigger tax moves on like conservation easements, you know, or other pieces of equipment that you can buy that produces an ROI, like ATM machines, depending on whether you're active or passive on write-offs. Or I made some moves in real estate to become a real estate investor so I could be a qualified, you know, real estate professional that obviously allows me to take all of my passive write-offs and write them off against my active income. Yeah. All of those are big. Yeah, I love that. Um, was buying the jet worth it? Nah. If you could go back and do it again, would you do it? Um, I, 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 I went in with the wrong expectation. I ended up buying two. And I, I got suckered into the idea that you can buy a jet and when you're not using it, charter it out and make money. That, that's not true. 
I, I, I think that if you experience that, you are so far the exception of the rule, it would be a bad expectation to step into. So really- Because all the jet brokers tell you, they send you their projected performa. Bullshit. And they're just selling it's, And you. it's not bullshit yeah. by little, it's bullshit by, you can't even believe it. I, I, I work with a couple of different brokers. Um, so there's a lot of BS in that industry. Um, jet setting was really fun during the pandemic and, 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 and like that's when jet setting had its like, its prime. Prices and everything have kind of come back down. They've normalized. Um, there's nothing better than flying a private jet. Like just to be from a user, user perspective. From a user, from a user perspective. Yeah. But what I would tell anyone, if you're going to get in the entry level game and put two or three or five million dollars out there for a jet, you should plan even after um, you know saving on your expenses by chartering out. If you're going to do that, and you're going to fly two or three times a month, you should probably still expect to pay at least a half a million dollars a year on top of that. And maybe even closer to a million. If you're willing to do that, then then jetting so is good for you. So if you have a million in just leftover moolah that you could burn, owning the damn thing yeah. per year, yeah, then do your thing. Then do your thing yeah. and have fun. Yeah. So it's really not that expensive of a of a game to get into. Um, um, I just picked up a helicopter. Like that's a new thing that I'm really. <laughs> Would you buy another jet? No, I bought two of them. I wouldn't do it again, uh, uh, but I bought a helicopter. Well, the helicopter. <laughs> you just buy t cool shit. Uh, yeah. You know, that's really what it is. I need, uh, dude, I need tax breaks either way. And the thing is a write-off. Um, Red Bull uses the B-105 in doing all its aerobatics. We bought this suite. It's a military chopper. And um, I'm very excited about it. I've got a partner on it. And it's a lot cheaper game to get into. It's like, you know, we're talking about like a few hundred thousand dollars yeah. versus millions. Are you going to try and get your pilot's license? Yeah. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, and, and that's more for adventuring and fun and and not so much distance. I mean, y you know, anywhere, like if I were to take my jet, you know, to Vegas and it's an hour flight, I can technically get there faster in a chopper. I'm flying slower, but because I can go from my house to the location, I don't have to get to the airport, yeah, runway. jet set. Runways aren't necessary. Yeah, as you necessary. You don't yeah. have it. So it, it. So I'm still playing in the game. I'm having fun. I'm selling my two jets, and I'm going to get something smaller and newer just for fun. It, well, when you mm -hmm. sell your jets, you're going to recapture that depreciation. Mm -hmm. So, but remember, I get to write off all the money that I lost. Yeah. Okay. So them. it could, so, could offset. Uh huh. That's yeah. not the best tax strategy, but it works. It no, no. It started off looking so, really good, and then it it, it it is what it is. But. It's, it really is a fun game. There's nothing, dude, there is nothing. I've had, I've created so many amazing memories on private jets. Like there's, there's one company that I own that is probably going to be more valuable than any of the real estate combined I ever do. And it, it's a company that has a hundred billion dollar potential. Like it's, wow. it's a piece of software. It went out to the market six months ago. It's picking up traction. It's going somewhere. And that deal, that deal happened on a jet. Like I had a guy donate, um, you know, six figures to my foundation. I said, Hey, I want to do some perks to make it sustainable. You know, come do some business meetings with me. We flew out on the way back. He's like, Hey, I have this business. What do you think about it? And within two minutes, I'm like, I will fund that business. I want to be your partner. I want in on that. And, um, there's something about a private jet that creates like the ultimate environment of creativity, luxury yeah, status. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, Two thoughts on that. Um, one, my dad is 76 years old. When my mom passed away, he was moping around for seven, eight months and, you know, rightfully so. And then uh, towards the end of that, I was trying to like come up with ways to get him, you know, to do something. And I said, what's one thing that mom would never let you do that you always, always wanted, wanted to, to do? And he said, get my pilot's license. Did he get his pilot's And I license? said, dude, you should do that. And he's like, no, nah, I'm old. I'm on this medication. I, I, I'm not emotionally there. Like, I, th that's too big a response. But that's, I'm past my prime. He told me every reason on the sun why, why he's not going to be able to do that. And after, like, maybe, like, three or four minutes of him giving me his, him giving me his excuses, I said, okay, hey, cool, no problem. When you're done being a little bitch. <laughs> Let me know yeah. and I'll help you any way I can, but yeah. I think you should do it. Next morning he calls me and he goes, Oh, you're fuck you. I'm getting my pilot's <laughs> license. I just called my doctor and set an appointment. I'm moving off the medication and I'm gonna I'm yeah. gonna get, you know, to where he can qualify. It that was over a year ago. He has been taking private lessons for over a year. He's the world's slowest yes. licensee. He is now done with all his training. He's just waiting for the final like FFA, yeah. FAA yeah. test. 
and he will officially have his pilot's license. Dude, that's so amazing. I thought that was that was kind of cool, you know. Yeah, Phil's life with one, a cool you're never, hobby. You're never too old to do it, and two, you got to live life on your own terms. Yeah. And my my reasoning was like, dude, this is a win win for you. Yeah. You either get to do something you always dreamed of doing, or you're gonna crash and see mom. Yeah. Like one way or another, we're wow. good. Like you wow. know, you're gonna get there. Hmm. Um. My second thought on, on the tax thing is I have a meeting late, later today. Maybe you know something about this. So um, I was talking to a friend. He makes $10 million plus dollars a year. He's yep. very well known. Um, I don't want to th throw his name out there because it's his personal financial business. But anyway, we were talking about taxes. And I said, I'm going to have a pretty big tax liability this yep. year because of all the money I've made um, in real estate and selling the business and all this other stuff. And so I said, you know, what, I, what cool creative things are you doing right now? And he goes, I've been buying, you know, heavy machinery. Yeah, yeah. And I said, okay, tell me about that. And he said, well, I got a wealth manager in Scottsdale that brokers the deals. Um, it's either the VRBO guys or I'm going to learn more about it. So anything I'm saying right now, I'm kind of talking out of my ass. But um, what he said was like one of the, the a bunch of uh, guys from Silicon Valley started this thing where they made this tech platform where you can broker out heavy machinery. And essentially what you do is you, um, you put your 20% down. Yep. And so if I wanted to buy a million dollars worth of heavy machinery, I put 200 grand down. I use my credit. I buy this, buy whatever I buy. And then they rent it out for five years for me through this platform. Yeah. And I get 15% on my money. Yeah. And then at the end, and then I get the, the, depreciation yep. and it's i think 60 percent bonus depreciable at the moment uh, unless trump at the end of the year becomes president and the first thing he's going to do is before we get to the end of the year he'll flip that back which to 100. i which that would be unbelievable i yeah. mean that that's such a game changer for everybody but for now it's i believe 60 percent it is and uh and then at the end of five years they'll guarantee to buy the equipment off you yeah I said, okay, that's a power move. Yeah. I like those kind of things. I need some more of that kind of stuff in my yeah. life because I don't want to buy a jet because I don't want to fund it sitting there. Yeah. To get 15% of my money, that's more than hard money loans that I'm putting yeah. out right now. Um, even when I loan my own company, I have a deal with all my business partners that if I put money into any of my companies, I get 12% of my money, right? Because, you know, even though we're partners, there's a cost of capital. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to I'm going to swipe that one. Actually, I'd be in a very different position if I use that one, Cody. Thank you. Yeah, 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 of course. I just tell them, listen, I have no problem funding the deal. Yeah. Um, but, you know, and if you put money in, you get 12 percent, too. It yeah. just goes on the books as a loan to the company. Yeah. And when the company can afford to pay it, we'll do it. But I'm yeah. not in a, not in a hurry. And yet there's no payments. It just accrues and compounds. And yeah. Uh, but anyway, two thoughts on on that right there. That's very cool. I like it. All right. So let's see. What else should we talk about? Dude, I, I, I got to tell you, I think I'm looking forward to Summit this year even more than the last one that you held two years ago. You said that it was going to be your last one. And the fact that you came out of the woodworks to do it again, I'm grateful because the last two years, the economy has not been great. We've been in a recession. The government won't call it that. And with rates coming down, the everything's about to shift dramatically. And this is the weird part, Cody. This is the part that flabbergasts me. In 2008, when the real estate prices dropped, Everyone was so scared to do anything in real estate, but it was the best time. Mm -hmm. I went here into Phoenix, I went into Vegas, I went into Florida, and I was buying up homes for 120, 140 grand that had been selling for 250. And within five years, everything came back. So studying the dynamics and understand the Kondrati of K-Wave cycle of how the economy works in real estate is very simple compared to the stock market. And I know one of the things I'm going to be doing at um, Summit is I'm gonna be talking about the economics of where we're at and why now is the time that people should be buying instead of waiting for, well, I'll buy when rates come down. I'm like that, like literally in, in less than six months, if you had just rewound the clock six months on your ROI, you probably will double or triple your ROI just by having the first mover advantage. Those are the kind of things, and I've talked with a lot of the other speakers on what they're gonna be sharing. I think Summit is going to be the place where People are going to share, especially the experts, how they've been making money in a bad recession and how it's only going to get better as we move through the next couple of years. So I'm excited that it's an election year and people are paused. I'm excited that no one's buying real estate because I'm getting my hands on the best deals. But at Summit, everyone's going to learn those secrets and they're going to start implementing them and they're going to start winning in a big way. After all, year over year, producing a 60% average ROI Dude, people, people in finance would kill for that opportunity. Yeah. And I'm going to show my entire blueprint on how anyone can do it on their own. That's the kind of stuff that will be happening at Summit. So honestly, that's just, that I'm, I'm excited to be there to share, but honestly, 
I'm going to be finding all sorts of partners for me. Like my 2025 is going to be set up with the people where it's like, wow, we resonate with each other. We get each other. And Chris, I can overlook the elephant in the room on some of your goofy videos and boom, we're going to partner up. We're going to make magic happen, but I'm going to find partners for other games that I want to play as well. I've gotten to know you over the last couple of years. I like quirky. I like opinionated. I like different. I like somebody who's bold enough to put themselves out there, even though sometimes I'm like, I wanted to leave so many comments. Like I was going to troll you so bad. Like yeah. I had them all teed up. We were going to do spoof videos of me and me in bed, you know, yeah. and just doing stuff. Cause I think, I think, but then you started even being playful with your own stuff, you yeah. know, and kind of making fun of yourself, which I think is, uh, says a lot about you and just like, you don't take life that serious. Yeah. And that, that you're I'm definitely not going to base my self esteem on the comments online. Cause I'd be fucked. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm too sensitive yeah. for some of that stuff. You know, it, bo it does bother me. You know, I, I just can't look at it. Um, well, look, dude, I'm excited for Summit. If you guys want to go, it's cleversummit.com. Mm -hmm. We have a small handful of tickets left. Yeah. Um, this podcast, we haven't been doing a lot of them because it's just been, you know, to put on an event like this, people don't understand. It's, it's insane. It, it'll cost over a million dollars, maybe a million and a half dollars. We're leveraging every relationship under the sun that we have. Dude, you, got a, you got a couple of yachts the day before. We're, You've we're, rented out an entire nightclub for a party yeah, in the middle of the whole thing. There's a thousand decisions. But when people come, they're going to see what a high production experience it is yeah. and why it took four months of our lives. The yeah. entire Clever team. Every time we put on an event like this, it's four months of nothing but, but that. Yeah. And it's all out warfare to sell. To, and and I, I'll tell you just from behind the scenes because people might find this fascinating because the way the market is ticket sales everything's different this time it's yeah. way more challenging it takes way more marketing energy way more hooks way more thought needs to go into every single video that we put in and all the all the sales and the bogos and the um i mean like i'm about to run a sale right now that i've never done for like it's gonna be like a flash sale for like Next 30 tickets, I'll pay for your hotel room. Jeez. Like just crazy shit like yeah, that because yeah. I'm always trying to think like how do I, you know, because my goal is to have 2,500 people sitting in front of us because yeah. I know we're going to change those lives. I know it's going to be the number one most talked about event, I, but I got to get you there. Yeah. And if I got to pay for your stupid hotel room just to get your ass yeah. there, I will do it, but I can't do it for everybody. So we yeah. try to come up with these little sales and stuff way harder for anybody throwing an event. Any of you marketers out there, I have a ton of respect for people filling rooms right now. Yeah. I didn't even want to do it. <laughs> I didn't want to, I didn't want to do clever summit. I kind of retired last time, Yeah. but we had thousands of emails coming in saying, dude, when are you going to throw another event? Yeah. When are you going to throw another event? A um, bunch of the speakers like you wanted to do it just because it's so much fun. So I'm Tom Brady and this, well, I, one last time, but this will be my last summit. Yeah. I'm glad that you're doing it. Yeah. And I think, I, I, I think the ripple effect of clever is hundreds of millions of dollars, m like minimum projection on what's going to happen for the people in that room, their trajectories, their financial mm -hmm. lives that are going to change the opportunities that are going to come to them. Like everything changes when you go to an event like this, like even if it wasn't clever in my own life, like for me to level up, like one of my personal secrets is I look for three to four events a year that are immersive. They're three to four days, right? Because it's one thing to go to an event for one day or for like a half a day or to try to hop on Zoom for two hours. Mm -hmm. But there's something about getting on the plane, getting in the car, getting there, and then literally I shut my cell phone off. I, sh I put myself in the room and I become totally present. And for those three days, like I'm gonna be taking notes and I'm gonna be learning from the speakers and every day that I'm at an event like this, I walk away with at least 10 to 15 what I need to implement. And when I come home from the event, for the next two weeks, I challenge myself to implement, set all of them in motion. And that's a lot to do. Like I clear half of my calendar for the two weeks after and I'm like, implement, 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 implement. And when I do that, by the time the next event rolls around three or four months later, my life has taken a crazy jump. I've got new business deals. I've got new business partners. I've got greater financial efficiency. I'm, I'm shutting down the things that aren't working. I'm turning on the things that are working. And so I'll do three or four events a year like this. Um, and clever though, is not an ordinary event. Like this one is because of the people that are going to be in the room and because of a million and a half dollars of production value, this is one of the most expensive events that actually gets thrown. And what that does is that attracts a different level of person that's actually going to be there. Yep. And the reality is, is that when you make the sacrifice of getting in a room like that and you implement what you learn 
everything changes. Yeah, it's a needle mover for it sure. It is. It's huge. All right. We're going to end this thing strong. You uh, time warped back. You're able to talk to your 15-year-old self. What's the pep talk? What's the advice? Oh, uh, dude, the pep talk is, is that you got to get a mentor. Like 15-year-old me would thought he wanted to be a doctor. I'm like, dude, you don't want to be a doctor. What you want to do is find the most successful person that you possibly can and follow them around like a lovesick puppy dog implementing everything that they teach you. That mentorship is a game changer. And, and events like Clever is where you go to find those kind of people too. It's where you get exposure to the people. And sometimes mentors are like, no, I just saw them on stage. But what they shared during that hour changed the way that I perceived the world and the things that I did. But then outside of that, you gotta find your person. Like people, every day someone finds me in the world and says, Chris, you're my real estate partner. And for the next 20 years, I'm gonna ride with them and we're gonna build an eight figure real estate empire together. Like I'm their guy to cause something that they want the benefit from. And they're going to leverage my partnership to, to basically as a cheat code to force what they're then not gonna have to spend 10,000 hours learning as a learning curve. Like I want the skill. It's like, you don't want the skill. You want the outcome partner with me. That'll make, well, I'm finding those people at clever. That's my advice to my 15 year old self is anything that you want. Don't go to school for it. Don't read a book. Don't not do those things, but go find the person, the man or the woman that embodies it, that is relevant with it today. And that's your person. And yeah. that's who you mentor with. And that's who you learn from. And that's how you're going to get, there's no faster technology on the planet. There's no faster way of getting where you want to go than finding someone that already has it and creating an agreement where that you can extract it, literally vampire it right out of them. All right, yeah, proximity is power. Yeah. Well, how would somebody partner with you? If they heard this and they were like, damn, I'm sitting looking at my, I got 70K trapped in my house. I got this 401K with 100K yeah. in it. It's slow. Uh, how can they pull it out and get it to you? Or do you walk them through that? Is there, mm -hmm. a, is there a, a training or something they can watch? Do they just pick up the phone and call you? How do they get a hold of you? Best thing to do is find me on social media, Chris Crohn, right? ChrisCrone.com. Find me on any social media platform that you want. And there's always going to be a link below, a link in the bio, the, a DM. And all you have to do is just reach out and just say, I want to partner or I want to learn about that. And then what I'll do is I'll pull you into my ecosystem. And what's kind of cool about partnering with me is that if you partner with me, even though I built a system around all this, you actually get my cell phone. Like we connect, I send videos back and forth because this partnership is real and the money that it makes is real. It's just backed by a team that will do it all for you. But the relationship, most of my partners, I think what they appreciate getting out of me is not just the real estate. They enjoy getting the lifestyle information or they enjoy trying to figure out how to raise teenagers or at least getting my perspective on some of these things that I've been through. Um, and as an influencer, like I dedicate my life to learning to live my life differently. If I resonate, I'm going to share that information with them. So find me on social media, reach out, let me know you want to partner and we'll, we'll, we'll make it happen. There you have it, folks. The amazing Chris Crone. Thank you for coming to the Cody, studio, man, brother. You, brother. You killed it and you look sharp. You're making money. You smell successful. People, yes, people just need to, to connect with you and the best place they could do it is at Summit. So hopefully I see you guys there. Uh, if, if you watch this and you came to Summit because of this podcast, make sure you let us know. If you see one yes. of us walking around, say, hey, I watched your guys' podcast. Um, that way we know that we connected with you through this, th through this channel. So awesome. we're out of here for now. Until next time. Take care, comb your hair, peace.